Hi everyone, and welcome to the second part of the Total Organic Carbon Analysis video series. In this video, we'll be talking about how to prepare your samples, your calibration curve, and get the instrument running. First, I'll quickly go over how to make stock solutions. Keep in mind that all of these recipes, as well as everything else discussed in this video, is available in the TOC procedure and is written out step by step. Most of this information is also available in the TOC manual, so check out either one of those things if you get stuck. For now, let's talk about the stock solutions. These stock solution recipes are for 1000 milligram per liter solutions that can but be diluted for your calibration curve. To make the stock for TOC, TC, and NPOC, you'll dissolve 2.125 grams of potassium hydrogen phthalate in one liter of DI water. And for inorganic carbon, you will dissolve 3.5 grams of sodium bicarbonate and 4.41 grams of sodium carbonate in one liter of DI water. All your chemicals should be dry and reagent grade. As for your calibration curve, you're going to want to take that 1000 milligram per liter stock solution and dilute it to 20 milligrams per liter. Your calibration curve will be five vials of this 20 milligram per liter solution, and the instrument will auto dilute from this to make the actual calibration curve. Be sure to make check standards like one, two, and five milligram per liter solutions as well to use throughout your run. This will help you make sure that your data is accurate. Another really useful recipe that I'll add here is the one for acidified water, since you'll be using it as your dilution water. The recipe for this is adding 600 microliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid, that's 12 molar hydrochloric acid, in one liter of DI water. As for sample prep, all of your samples should be acidified to a pH of four. If your pH is too high, the inorganic carbon won't be purged from your samples, and you may have carbon dioxide partitioned from the atmosphere into your sample, and if the pH is too low, like below 2, you'll get hydrophobic interactions between the organic molecules in your sample and the sample vessel walls. That'll make your measurements inaccurate. Also, keep in mind whether or not your sample needs to be filtered. If you want to measure dissolved carbon only, you need to filter your sample. If you want to distinguish between dissolved carbon and total carbon, you'll need to run both filtered and unfiltered samples. Now, let's take a look at the instrument. Okay, so you've acidified your samples and set up your calibration curve. Now let's get the instrument ready to run. The first step is to open the main valve on the gas cylinder and then open the pressure regulator. The pressure regulator on this left should be set at at least 40 psi. If the flow rate in your system is too high, you're going to get sloppy, inconsistent peaks, and if it's too low, you won't get any peaks at all because you won't have enough flow through your system. You also need to make sure that there's adequate pressure in the tank. If this is too low, uh, you might run out of gas throughout your run, so you need to let somebody know who manages the instrument. Keep in mind, for every 100 samples you run, it's going to use about 400 to 500 PSI from the tank. The next thing you need to do is log on to the computer. Since it's already logged on here, we're good to go. To turn on the TOC, we just push this button right here in the front. It's going to turn from orange to green, and you'll hear the instrument start to power up. So once we turn the TOC on, it's going to take a little while to warm up. While it warms up, we're going to check a few things to make sure that it's completely ready to go. We're going to start by opening it up. The first thing we want to check is this guy right here, which is the IC reaction vessel. We want to make sure that there's continuous bubbles in here and that there is fluid in here. If there's not fluid, you need to fill this up with 0.05 molar hydrochloric acid. We also want to check back here, this humidifier, that the water level is right around this line right here. If it's not, you need to fill it up with water. If you've checked those and they both look good, we're free to start looking at some other things around the instrument. The next thing we want to check is this waste container back here. We want to make sure that it's not completely full because if it is, we need to empty it out and replace it. Lastly, we want to come around to the side of the instrument and check all these bottles on the side. The biggest bottle here is your diluent bottle and it should be filled with acidified water. If it's not full, make sure that it is. Next to this is the hydrochloric acid bottle. It should be filled with two molar hydrochloric acid. Next to this is your IC reagent bottle, which should be filled with phosphoric acid. And behind that is your drain pot, and you need to just make sure that that is also filled with water. Lastly, we have this bottle over here on the other side of the auto sampler. This bottle should also be filled with DI water, acidified DI water, and this is gonna be your vial zero. So anytime you have uh, a vial zero that's supposed to be DI water in your sample run, it'll be drawing from that bottle there. 
Now if all these bottles are filled with the correct reagents, we're ready to go over to the computer, open up the software, and start setting up our run. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the software by clicking on this TOC Control L icon. And then we're going to click on Open Sample Table Editor. You're going to type your initials right here, and then you're going to hit OK to open up the software. It's going to take a couple of seconds to load. And then you're going to come to a home screen that looks like this. The first thing that we have to do is we need to open up a sample table by clicking on new here. The system that we use is going to be the TOC and you can enter any useful comments you want here. Once you have a sample table open, you can tell it to connect to the instrument. It's going to take a minute to connect and the TOC is going to make some noises as it initializes. Now that we're connected, we can see here in the top right corner, uh, it will say ready or not ready. If we hit monitor uh, right next to this button, we'll see exactly what's ready and what isn't. We want to see the TOC, TN, and ASI tabs all have green check marks on them, as well as every individual thing in here. We want to see that the supply gas pressure is at at least 200 kilopascals and carrier gas flow is at 150 milliliters per minute. Once all of these things have been equilibrated, i.e. they stop changing, the instrument will change to ready and we can start our run. But while everything's getting uh, warmed up here, we can start preparing our sample schedule. So keep in mind that whatever type of analysis you'll be running, these steps might be slightly different, as in you'll click on different calibration curves, systems, or analysis types. The specifics of which option to choose is specified in the standard operating procedure, so keep that near you when you're setting up your run. The first thing to do is to right click and hit insert sample. It's going to ask me what method I plan on using and I'm going to pick NPOC because it's the most common thing people run. Then it's going to ask me for my sample name and the type of method that I want to use. I'm going to pick NPOC and I'm going to call my sample DI because it's going to be a DI water. Now it's going to ask me for a calibration curve. I'm going to pick the NPOC calibration curve that corresponds to the method that I picked. This particular method uses two calibration curves, one for low concentrations and one for high concentrations. This tab is mostly related to the method, and you probably won't have to change anything here. Um, there are things like injection volume and expected concentration range. The number of injections basically means that it'll inject up to that many number of samples or as many samples as it takes to get within your specified standard deviation, which we have here as 0.1. We also have options for the number of washes to wash out the auto sampler, auto dilution if you haven't diluted your samples, acid addition if you didn't acidify your samples, and sparge gas flow rate and sparge time. Again, most of the time you won't be changing anything here. These next two pages you can usually skip through, we won't be changing anything there, and then finally it inserts your DI water. Thankfully, we don't have to do that over and over. We can always just copy and paste our injections to make the rest of our run. Once we've got some DI waters in there, we need to insert a calibration curve. Similarly to how we added the DI water, I'm going to click on Insert and then Calibration Curve. The method I choose is going to be NPOC, and the calibration curve that I choose is going to be my NPOC curve. Because I have two cal curves, I'm actually going to run one of them, then two DI waters, then a second calibration curve, and then two DIs, and then I can finally start uh, adding samples to my run. So I can add samples the same way that I added DI waters, and you need to keep in mind uh, that anytime you run samples, they need to follow this order. It needs to be five samples followed by two DI waters. So five samples, two DIs, five samples, two DIs. And you can just copy and paste samples, rename them, uh, because we'll be editing the position at the end anyways. Another important note is that every 10 or so samples you should have a control standard. So something at like 2, 5, or 10 parts per million uh, that just double checks that your instrument is accurate. Once you've got the order of your sample set up, we need to update their locations in the tray. To do that, we're going to click on this thing up here that looks like a cake, and we tell it where our samples are. This column here is where you input all of your sample locations. Remember, DI water is always zero, and each of your calibration points needs to come from a different vial. 
So you'll just go through each one of these and input them into the position uh, that you put them in the actual sample tray. Once all of our samples are in the right locations and the sample table has them in order, you'll look for this green ready button in the top right, and all you have to do is hit start to start your run. Samples will take about 10 minutes each, uh, so be sure to grab and clean your vials after they're done so that the next person can use the instrument. Once your run is complete, it should look something like this. This results column is where you'll have all of your results. The instrument has taken multiple injections of your sample, and this is where it presents the result that was within that provided standard deviation that we specified earlier. You can also manually collect all of this data, uh, but it's easier to go to the top left here and hit File, and then use one of these export options. You can export it as an Excel file or as a text file with varying levels of detail from basic results to complete injection details, processing details, and peak areas. Now if you click on this button up here in the right that looks like little peaks, you can look at the details for each individual sample and injection. It'll tell you how many injections it took, what each injection looked like in regards to the area under the curve and the corresponding concentration, and if there were any issues with that injection. Now that's just about everything you need to know to get started running the TOC. So remember, if you ever get stuck or have questions, check the standard operating procedure in the binder next to the TOC check the operator's manual, or reach out to someone who manages the instrument. Also be sure to follow any protocol set by your research group or the instrument managers, like filling out user logs or scheduling the equipment properly.